this week in Delaware County. Steve Lindell here to talk about well, weather safety and more. Jason Rogers, Delaware County Emergency Management Agency, is uh, in studio. Uh, serious subject, especially with that which has happened in the last uh, several weeks, uh, Oklahoma notwithstanding and, and other examples, too. Uh, this is the season, isn't it? This is the season. Uh, we were fortunate uh, last year. Uh, we did have several, obviously, EF4 tornadoes in Indiana down in Henryville, so we have seen that devastation and destruction. Oklahoma is going through that. So it's always a big topic here in the spring, and it's very important for your family to understand what to do, how to prepare, um, what to expect as far as warnings and those types of things. Now let's talk about, uh, in no particular order, uh, the civil defense sirens, the weather sirens, those are intended to help you when you're outdoors. Is that not correct? That That is correct, Steve, and, and you referred to them as the civil defense sirens, and that's something that we do have to realize that some of those were put in in the 50s, yeah. and so that is very old infrastructure. It's electronics that are out in the weather year-round, so you know they are subject to failure, and uh, we test them every Friday at 11 here in Delaware County, mm -hmm. and uh, they are constantly being... Uh, worked on and, and upgraded and, and taken care of, and some of them have been taken down because they, they fail. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we try to maintain those as best we can. Currently, we have 28 tornado sirens in Delaware County, uh, but you're absolutely correct. Those are outdoor warning sirens. They are not meant to wake you up uh, in the middle of the night. They are not meant to be heard indoors. Uh, if you are out playing ball or you're out uh, maybe golfing, uh, enjoying, you know, some nice spring weather and it kicks up, then those tornado warnings are alerted through that outdoor warning system if you have no other means of communication. Awesome. So if you're at your house, the single best way to get alerts is a weather alert radio. Absolutely. And and not only at your house, but if you have a smartphone, there are app, apps out sure. there that uh, will alert for uh, weather emergencies and you can get more information, meaning a sooner uh, notification of the weather emergency. So you can choose whether you know it's a tornado warning, a tornado wash, maybe a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, and those are the uh, National Weather Service uh, nomenclatures of giving the pre-warning. So the more information you have, the more information that you can prepare your family for, the, the safer you are going to be. Absolutely 100% a weather radio is a necessity as much so as a smoke detector or mm -hmm. CO detector in your home. Um, back to the Oklahoma tornado situation, there were those that were interviewed by the, the television right after everything had cleared, and they said, we didn't have any warning at all. I think in, in retrospect, I think 20 minutes or maybe a little further or longer than that was actually the warnings given by the National Weather Service in that area which is obviously not a lot, but that's that's more than nothing. That means those people probably weren't dialed into these sort of technologies to help them. Right? That is always a complaint that people say, I didn't hear the sirens, I didn't yeah. get the information, and we have to be self-reliant in these times. There are so many forms of media that we can get this information from. You mm -hmm. have to understand, those people in Moore, Oklahoma, that, that is right next to Norman, which is where the Storm Prediction Center sits. <laughs> right. This is... This is their backyard of the National Weather right. Service. So, um, you know, they are saying, well, we didn't get the information. They were not dialed into that information. Right. It was out there. You have to go out and grab it yourself at times. And, folks, that's what we're trying to impart on you today. The wisdom of, of pre-planning and being aware will uh, potentially save your life. And uh, then there's the aftermath. Let's say something does hit, God forbid. Uh, you really need to have a family and a business, maybe, or both, plan for what do we do then. That's good to put in place right now, too, isn't it? Absolutely it is. And the only, really your only choice is to plan now. Because if you're shooting off the cuff, you may not have cell towers to communicate with your family, right. your your business partners, or, you know, we're we're um, going to meet at XYZ location. So if you, if you know that you cannot get home because everybody, thinks, well, well, we'll all go home, we'll meet at, meet at home, and, and that's what our plan's going to be. Well, we have seen with several storms uh, here in Delaware County already this year that the, you know, trees come down and you can't get through and we've got roadways blocked and, you know, it may be 
uh, several trees that are located near your neighborhood, and you're not going to be able to get to your house. Uh, power lines down are obviously a very dangerous situation, so we don't, wouldn't want to be walking through those. So you want to set up maybe an alternate location to meet your family mm -hmm. if you can't get home. And uh, so that's that's a thought. Uh, alternate means of communication, if the cellular uh cellular lines are busy, right. you can typically get a text message through. Uh, it takes less infrastructure to get that through. And we've seen that through Katrina. We've seen that through 9-11. Uh, and, and these, uh, Henryville, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all these types of alternate communications could be ways that uh, individuals communicate with each other, their family, their friends, and, and so forth. So that's those are all things that we need to think about. And this is, this is very truly, Steve, a five-minute conversation at yep. dinner and say, hey, look, we're going to meet at Steve Lindell's house uh, if if we can't get to our house. Mm -hmm. Just uh, thinking ahead is, is what it's all about. You've also advised us in the past for, for these kinds of situations, Jason, and others that you can't predict, to have some sort of a uh, food and or water supply in the house or accessible in some way, shape, or fashion. That That's always a good idea, too. Be prepared. Absolutely. So after you've made your emergency plan, you want to have an emergency kit. And that kit may be very specific to your family. So if it means medications, if it means... Uh, cellular charging devices, if it means important documents, you know, those are all things that you want to customize your emergency kit for your home. So maybe you have to shelter at your home if you have somebody that has special needs, if you have a diabetic or, or certain medications that need to be um, refrigerated, then sure. what you're going to do is maybe put an extra cooler in there and keep some uh, frozen ice packs or uh, water bottles in your uh, freezer. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are all things that you can do as a family. You also want to maybe have, you've, you've got maybe jumper cables in your car, mm -hmm. throw a first aid kit in there, throw some uh, granola bars and those types of things that if you were to get stranded uh, away from your home, away from your home emergency kit that you could at least maintain. Uh, we remember through the ice storm, power's out. Out. You, it's not. There's no going through a drive-through. Right. So uh, you know we want to try to prepare. And, and you said it absolutely. It is all thinking ahead, preparing ahead. The more that you prepare now, the less needy you will be in an emergency. And we have to remember that there are only so many resources in this community and all over East Central Indiana. Right. And they may be tasked with more emergent situations going on, house fires, ambulance calls. We only have so many of those people to call. So you've got to be able to take care of yourself. And what we recommend is for 72 hours. Okay. Uh, you and I are, are parents. We have, we have uh, children that we uh, love and are proud of and so on and so forth. As we relate to spring and summer months, those kids are running like bats out of you-know-what. Know where your children are. And and moms, dads, husbands, wives, you need to know where each other is supposed to be. Uh, also, again, in an emergency situation, being able to track down and notify and or find people is critical to create to reduce panic. Well, and the other thing is is we you know we teach our children our address. We teach our children our phone number. Just add that caveat. Where are we going to be in, in case of an emergency? We are going to meet at Grandpa's house. Mm -hmm. So if your son's with his ball team yep. and his best friend's parents have them and he says, you know, we can't get a hold of your parents, where should we go? Automatically the answer should be take me to Grandpa's house. Uh, I, you know, I typically can get you there uh -huh. and, and uh, uh, or we know the address. Or what the other thing... In an emergency, yeah. we talk about panic. Uh, Delaware County Emergency Management offers an emergency plan. All you have to do is fill it out. It's got a wallet card. So you pull this wallet card out and say, oh, yeah, this is what our plan is. Everybody in the family can have that. You can stick it in your golf bag, in your um, bat bag, you know, mm -hmm. in backpacks and, sure. and those types of things. So, you know, it, it just takes a few minutes to help your family, your neighborhood, and your community be a little bit more prepared uh, so we're not caught off guard. Where do you, how do they get a hold of one of these cards, the, the planner thingers? Well, we actually have them on our website okay. at dcema.com, yep. and they are downloadable. Uh, we will also be providing them at uh, many of our public um, 
appearances this summer. Okay. So the fair and a few other places you'll be able to visit our booths. And uh, they had them at the home show, and we're, we're passing them out. So if you see a sign that says Delaware County Emergency Management, stop in, say hello, and pick up your fill-in-the-blank emergency plan. Your website's also a good resource for way more information than we can cover in 10 or 11 minutes on the radio this morning. Um, what to do in case of a flood, in case of a watch. You know, what's a warning? It's amazing to me how many people don't know the difference between simply a weather watch and a weather warning. And a lot of that stuff is explained on your website, too. A- absolutely. And if you if you buy a weather radio, it has the Delaware County same code, which is the code specifically for our county. One thing that uh, the alternate communication that we talk about is fortunate that Delaware County has its own weather radio repeater. Yeah. So that is a home uh, base weather information. So we've got it. So those are going to work. But absolutely, you know, the watch and the warning thing, if we're warning you, we're warning you, <laughs> that, get worse. out of the way. It's, that's worse. It's, yes, it's absolutely worse. All right, Jason, good to see you again. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Steve. How's the golf game, by the way? Is it's it going coming okay? along. All right. How's the wife's golf game? It's Better than mine. All right. (laughs) Really? (laughs) All right. All right. This week in Delaware County with Jason Rogers, Delaware County Emergency Management Agency. We'll have more coming up. Just a moment.